everyone. Come on in because yes, we are still reviewing A Married at First Sight season 16 and this is episode 223. For real though, it's 23, but it feels like 223. Uh, we finally got to see the scene that they've been teasing all season long. The scene where Dom and um, Clint kiss and come to find out all it was was a game, a truth or dare kind of stuff. And I uh, come to find out Clint ain't even interested in Dom. He, he only did it to get some get back at Gina. Yep, he did it. He only really did it to get some get back at Gina because what Gina's over there doing with Matt. Because other than that, he ain't interested in Dom. He is not interested in Dom one bit, not nothing long term. And go a step further, ain't nobody interested in Dom. Matt's not interested in Dom. Clint's not interested in Dom. And she up here setting up this date with Gil. Gil is not interested in Dom. In fact, he said, uh, adios. At the end of that conversation, he said, adios. And uh, maybe there'll be a second conversation, but my plate is full and I'm busy. Um, she got curved. She got curved by Gil. And like I said before, Gil's not interested in Dom. And one thing Dom better realize when she goes back out here in the dating world, she better realize that that little story she got, about um, being married to somebody for 10 days and she knew in 10 days she didn't want to be married to him, ain't no man going to buy it. No man's going to like the story because that what that makes you, you're a runner, you're a track star. And men are going to be leery about getting with a woman who couldn't even give her marriage at least eight weeks. I don't care what signs you saw. What Gil and every one of her men is going to say is, I don't understand why you couldn't at least stay eight weeks. Why are you such a runner? Why are you such a track star? She tried to clean up and say, well, you know, I saw these signs and these signs end up being true. That's not going to matter. People are going to be scared to take a chance on her because what they're going to look at her as is she's flighty. She's a runner. She's a track star. And they're not going to take a chance on her. When she told Gil she was only in the marriage for 10 days, he really was not interested. I, let me tell you something. Gil wanted to stay in the marriage with Mirla. With Mirla. He already said he can't trust people. He's having problems trusting people. Why the heck would he get with a woman who was only married for 10 days and said no man was even worth more than more? No man was worth even eight weeks to give it a shot. Please. Uh, Dom, better stop telling that story. It ain't a good story. She thinks it makes her look good, but it doesn't. It actually makes her look horrible. He said maybe possibly, maybe a possibly. <laughs> That's such a, I'm not talking to you again. He said maybe and possibly. <laughs> Basically, that's a no, Dom. He ain't going to talk to you again. He said, maybe and possibly we could talk, but my schedule is busy. <laughs> that was hilarious. She got curbed. Her mama had that little dinner with her. They shared the little blue margaritas. Her mama was disappointed. I'm starting to realize her mother knows her daughter's hard to match. Her mother knows her daughter's hard to match. She tried to pawn her off from this marriage at first sight. And even her mother said, I wish you would have given it more than more than one week. Her mother said, I wish you would have given it more time. And Dom says, oh, what for? I know what I know already. What's the, it was a waste of my time. Why did I even do it? And her mom says, I know my daughter's got some quirks. She got some quirks, all right, mama. She got some quirks. And her mama was trying to marry her off because <laughs> her mama knows she's going to have a hard time. Dom is going to have a hard time. And now she's out here kissing Clint too. Girl. She ain't ready, y'all. She ain't ready. But she was right about Mac. Mac's back in Flint, Michigan, uh, selling his weed. He said he's director of operations and growing. Uh, he's a grower. I know they do make a lot of money. I'm telling you, those people who, make, who grow that weed, they make a lot of money. I've met people who are director of operations, and that's their whole thing. And they make a good money. And Mac said, I'm out here chasing the money, and I'm going back to Flint, Michigan, where the money is better, not in Tennessee. Well, we said that. We said, how can you make money in a state like Tennessee where weed ain't even legal? <laughs> Dom was right about a Mac. He had no intentions on ever staying in Tennessee. Absolutely not. Because how the heck can you be a person who makes all your money in the weed business and it's not even legal in the whole entire state? He had no plans of staying in Tennessee, y'all. He talking about when he tried to come here and accept lesser money, but he had to chase the money. You think he was going to stay in a whole state and make lesser money? Heck no. He had no intentions ever to stay in Tennessee. Uh, that's what Dom did pick up right on him. He was hoping he'd get a woman, fall in love with him, and then eventually he'd be able to convince her to move to a state where weed was legal. And since he didn't convince no woman to do that, he packed up his stuff, he went on up there to Flint, Michigan, and now he's making his money because he says he likes nice things. 
Okay, Mac, Mac is still a liar. Mac is still a liar about his whole scheme. But it doesn't matter that he's a liar because people are always still gonna hear that Dom gave up in 11 days. And even if Mac's a liar, like I know he is, it's still gonna reflect badly on her because her walking away says more about her character than it says about his character. And people are gonna pick up on that. That then is her problem. She thinks she's going to be able to always say, well, me walking away in 10 days was justified because he lied and he said he wasn't going to really stay in Tennessee, but he did. She's going to look foolish. She's going to look foolish because people are going to say, let's say he did lie. And he really wanted to move from Tennessee. You mean to tell me you walked out a whole marriage in 10 days? I'm telling you, no man is going to like that story. They're not going to trust her. They're not going to feel safe and secure with her. Talk about feeling unsafe. What's unsafe is this business deal that Kirsten's trying to wrap Jasmine into. Uh, Jasmine, don't get no business with Kirsten. Let me tell you who Kirsten is. I've told you guys who Kirsten is. Kirsten is all talk and no action. All talk, no action, over promise, under deliver. I've said that all season. And if y'all don't believe it, if y'all didn't believe she was overpromised and underdelivering her marriage, now look at this business deal she's trying to rope Jasmine in, talking about they're gonna make a ten thousand dollars on a weekend. If you made ten thousand dollars on a weekend with one party bus, everybody would be in that doggone business. Everyone. She talking about we're gonna have all these slots pick up. People ain't renting no party bus at eight o'clock in the morning, Kirsten. People are not renting party buses at eight o'clock in the morning. People only rent party buses at night, late at night. Pickup is not even until maybe 10 o'clock sometimes. 9, 10 o'clock. They only need the party bus for four hours. Ain't nobody on no party bus for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours. They're not using the party bus that long. I don't know how she comes up with these numbers that she's going to make $10,000 in a weekend off one bus as if people are going to be winning party buses every hour on the hour, every hour on the hour for 24 hours straight. How much is a party bus per hour? $400 an hour? That's at best maybe $3,000 a night. So at best, what you making on one party bus to cover the driver's fees, your cut, all the insurance, the gas, the bus itself is probably going to cost about $160,000. What's the lease on that? And the insurance, you know how much insurance costs on a party bus? You riding around with drunk people? She don't think. All she does is overpromise, underdeliver, and here she is promising $250,000 a year in profit. $400,000 a year in gross income off of one dog on party bus. Let me tell you something, Kirsten. Kirsten, if you get your party bus up and going and you make $250,000 a year off one bus, one bus, girl, call me. I'm ready to invest. Call me. I'm, I'm telling you, she's over promised and under deliver. And I sure hope Jasmine ain't going for this a fake business scam. Kirsten just need people to do stuff for her. Remember, this was a girl who couldn't even put a logo together and couldn't get her website up and going. She needed Shaq to do that for her. But all of a sudden now, she's over here crunching numbers, talking about we about to make a half a million dollars on a party bus just by, re just by renting on Saturdays and Sundays. Girl, get out of here. Kirsten lives in La La Land. I don't know where she comes up with this stuff. $2.9 million houses, you know, $400,000 a year on one party bus where you only rent it on Saturdays and Sundays. <laughs> Good Lord. This is ridiculous. After all this time, we finally did get to meet somebody in Kirsten's family. We went back and met the cousins and the cousin was like, what's wrong? Where's your ring? I guess everything fell apart. She said, yeah, but you know, but he said I wasn't nurturing enough, but I know it's got to be something more. No, that's it. That's exactly the reason why he says you don't give him enough attention. And Kirsten said, that's okay because I'm ready to go back here to make my money. Girl, you ain't making no money selling no real estate. You can forget about it. I know Kirsten ain't making no money. Interest rates are down here. What, what the interest rates out here now? Six and a half percent. Ain't nobody buying no houses unless they got cash. Ain't nobody financing no house no more. Have you seen the news? She got her cousins over here thinking it was all Shaq's fault. He was the one that was too picky. He was the one that wasn't a clear communicator. He was the one that was asking for too much and wanted the pretty package. He was, he was wanting that too. Yeah, but you were too, Kirsten. Kirsten over here got her, got her cousins thinking that it was all Shaq and had nothing to do with her. And this girl. Now she's talking about she don't know if she want to meet him. She was saying, I don't know if I really want to meet him. I got a feeling. You were the one that was just saying you wanted closure. Remember last week, the breakup wasn't good enough. You wanted closure. You wanted a better situation. You needed more from the breakup. You needed another explanation. You just told the cousin that I don't believe his story, that it was all me. It's got to be more. I need more information. 
more and more and more. They name shouldn't have been Mr. and Mrs. Dillon. It should have been Mr. and Mrs. Moore. Mr. and Mrs. Moore, because that's what they need. They both need more. And then when they finally met, when they finally did meet up, what did Shaq tell Kirsten at the end? I see here once again, it turned out just the way I wanted because she didn't give me enough um, condolences to my family. <laughs> I told you I was never enough. He said, just like Kirsten, just like he thought, no nurturing Kirsten. My mama died, not my mama, my grandmother died. And when she didn't ask me, did the family need anything? She didn't ask me to do anything. All she did was call me and say my condolences. <laughs> he said, so just like I said, no nurturing Kirsten. Kirsten, what he wants you to do was cook him a home cooked meal uh, or something, a sense of food to the family's house, send some flowers, do something. That's what Shaq is saying. She didn't send no flowers. She didn't send no card. She didn't send um, no a food to the house so the family didn't have to cook. You know what you do? This is the South. I know they do it here in California. I know they do it in the South. Out here in California, what we do is if you don't live close by and you're not willing to cook them something and take them to the house and they out of state or something, what you at least do is you order some Uber Eats for them. You find a restaurant nearby and you do send them some food to the house. So that there's a full cook because the old thing is when you're mourning a death, you're so distraught, you don't have time to cook. People are coming in throughout the house. It's nice to have some food around, some chicken, some sandwiches, or something. And what Shaq was saying was, here is Kirsten from the South. She's supposed to be a caring, nurturing woman, want to be a housewife. And once again, she didn't do nothing nurturing. All she talking about is how to run a limousine party bus and make $500,000 a year. This was funny. She said, but why was you crying anyway? You was the one that said no to me. He said, I was crying because I chose myself. He said he was crying because he couldn't believe he was choosing himself. And he knew in his heart he didn't want to be with Kirsten. He wanted to be married to Kirsten, but he realized in his heart he couldn't be happy with her. Because Kirsten ain't doing nothing for Shaq. Kirsten, ain't, that's why I told Jasmine, don't go in the business with her. Because all, Jas all Kirsten is going to be sitting back and doing in business is talking about what she wants. And then she's going to want Jasmine to do all the work. She over there trying to use Jasmine. Talking about, see, Jasmine, I see you got a business. You got a dog business. You got a cheerleading business. Now let's go ahead and get this business together. Then you can do all the work. And all I got to do is sit back and say what I want and you'll make it happen. That's who Kirsten's looking for. Kirsten's looking for a husband and a business par partner where she can sit back and talk about what she wants, what's good for her, and then everybody else makes it happen. Kirsten ain't no doer. She's not a doer. She's an asker. She asks and other people do. There ain't no way I'd be in business with Kirsten. No way and heck. But I guess they ended on a good note. They said, I guess where we're going to be. We're going to be cordial. We're going to be cordial. And that's the end of that. And that's how it ended. So I hope they got their closure. I hope finally it's enough. I hope no matter what, where it is right now, I hope it is enough. Finally. And talking about who I've had enough of, I've had enough of Eris too. Eris out here on this date with this girl named Kendra. She only on a date because she ain't seen the show by this time. She has not seen the show on how Eris treated Jasmine. Because if she had, ain't no way she'd be out with Eris. <laughs> girl, you better run from him. You better run from him. They talk about we got things in common because we both keep our houses thermostat at 68. Of course you do. Robots like it cold. They can't be overheating. They like it cold. You can see why she wasn't chosen because she will be talking about one of her deal breakers was to be a Christian. Uh, Eris ain't no Christian. He, like he said, I go to meditate. He didn't say it was him, but he was talking about himself. He was talking about some people like to go to meditate. That's Eris. Eris likes to meditate. A Eris likes to do yoga. He's probably a vegetarian, vegan or something like that. This girl talking about she was lactose intolerant, but she eats cheese or milk or drinks milk anyway. Girl, if you lactose intolerant, don't nobody want to hear you farting. Eric's talking about some people don't want to go to church. No, he don't want to go to church. He don't go to churches. He goes to factories. He's a robot. This girl better watch this show before she asks for any more dates. But I know they ain't going out on no other date. Eris was bitch being cordial to her because he was like, I can't have another woman and tell another woman on this show I'm not attracted to her. But he was not attracted to her. Not one bit. He was lying, talking about maybe we could have a second date. Ain't going to be no second date, Eris. We on to you. We already know your game you playing. And we knew there was no way you was going to tell another woman she wasn't attractive enough for you before you go out with her. She ain't going out with Kendra again. You can forget about it, Kendra. And when she started asking about the father, and he started going to my dad, past, I was like, oh, no, please, let's not go down this road. 
again. We do not need to go down this road up again. No more, no more talking about that. And talk about conversations that are off limits and misleading. How about that conversation Gina had with her mom and her stepdad? And her mom says, I don't understand why he couldn't just be attracted to you. Gina didn't tell you, mama. Gina didn't tell you that the person who first said they weren't attracted was her. Does Gina got her mom over here sitting thinking it was all Clint that wasn't attracted to Gina when Gina was the one that threw the first shot. Gina was the one talking about how she wasn't attracted to Clint. We saw these little previews at the end talking about he and Gina have gotten closer. Maybe there's some rekindling. Good Lord. Good Lord. Gina said, let me go get me an attorney and make sure that, um, you know, Clint can't take this dog from me. Let me find out what my rights are in this, in this uh, divorce. You know who's getting rich from Married at First Sight? These attorneys. This is who's getting rich from Married at First Sight. These attorneys. They love Married at First Sight. They bring them a steady uh, uh, line of clients because they produce at least four or five divorces a season. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to that law firm. This might be some kind of racket. <laughs> Somebody better check out these producers. Maybe it's Dr. Pepper or Pastor Cal. Maybe they get a little kickback from these uh, lawyers' offices about, hey, if you match some people wrong and we know they're going to get a divorce, uh, send them to our, our law office and we'll give you uh, $2,000 on the back end. This could be some kind of racket, some kind of scam, because I can't understand how we can't get no uh, real marriages out of these seasons. One marriage with Nicole and Chris, that's it. Gina here talking about the day with Mac went well, and I was like, girl, you not going out with Mac no more either. Just like Eris said, well, I tried to call Mac, and he don't even pick up the phone for me either. And Gina decides she's going to call Mac, and he ain't picking up the phone for her either. This is all just fake phony. Mac don't like Gina. Eris doesn't like Kendra. Clint don't like Dom. Chris and Nicole seem like they humming along. Nicole over here still trying to make the rules, trying to have all the parties, trying to get everybody together. Telling on, um, she the one telling Clint and Dom they should kiss. She makes the rules. Ooh, good Lord. I'm glad they're happy with each other. I'm glad they're happy with each other. She found her person because ain't too many people who want to put up with Nicole. There's really not too many people. And I'm glad her dad came around. Seems like her dad is really embracing the marriage and happy for her. So I'm glad to see that, that part came into place as well because he was a little salty about it in the beginning. But I'm happy to hear. I'm happy. I'm happy to see he has come around. I hope Clint does get a dog. I hope he does adopt one of the uh, little Labradoodles. I wonder why he didn't get one from Jasmine. I wonder does Jasmine still sell dogs? Why Clint didn't just um, buy one from Jasmine? Isn't that her business? Isn't that what she does? Well, that's it, y'all. I guess we'll have to see what happens next week. I think next week, what is it, the reunion? I'm not for sure what's coming up. Good Lord, we're going to be here. We're going to be here until hell freezes over. They ain't going to never let us go from this uh, married at first sight season. Never. Well, that's it, y'all. I'll talk to you later. Bye.